Hi, I'm Melissa and I would like to talk to you a little bit about midwives. Now, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about who midwives are and what midwives do. I'd like to clear some of that up for you. So with answers to all of your burning questions, here is my short video, Why Midwifery? So, I think we need to begin with a brief history of midwifery. Now, as long as anyone can remember, from the beginning of time, when it was time for a woman to have a baby, she would surround herself with other people, with family members, friends, and especially women from her community who knew how to support and to guide a woman through this experience of birth and new motherhood. Now, these women were the first midwives, and they are talked about in the Bible and in ancient Greek texts about how uh, an asset they can be to the community if they're a good midwife. Now, the first midwives in America were this kind of midwife. They received their education uh, through apprenticeships and through knowledge that was passed down from midwife to midwife throughout the ages. Now, in this time, birth was a lot more dangerous than it is nowadays. A lot more women and babies died from infections, from blood loss, from babies getting stuck than they do now. So, in the 1800s, a lot of doctors started attending births instead of midwives. These doctors had some excellent tricks up their sleeves as far as using forceps to get out babies that were stuck, and they saved a lot, a lot of women and babies, which is something that we can be so very thankful for. Now, the problem is, is that women who were having completely normal and healthy pregnancies would also go to see these doctors and use these doctors. And sometimes, in some situations, the interventions that the doctors used to save women's lives with complicated pregnancies actually did more harm than good for those who didn't need that intervention in the first place. Now, the fact that interventions could, in some situations, do more harm than good was not very well understood at the time. So a campaign was led that said that it was safer to use physicians than midwives for birth. Now, this campaign portrayed midwives as dirty, uneducated, and very dangerous, and presented hospitals and physicians as these clean, wonderful new ways to have a baby. Now, this pretty much wiped out midwifery in America. So why are we still talking about it today? Well, in the 1920s, there was this nurse named Mary Breckenridge who went to France after World War I to do relief work. There, she met British nurse midwives who really used their nursing education to safely deliver babies and help moms through the prenatal as well as the postpartum period and really helped educate and give health care to these new families. Mary Breckenridge thought that this was a great idea and decided to try to bring this nurse midwifery idea to America. She went to England and got her education as a midwife and came back to America. She brought some British nurse midwives with her and sent some American nurses to England to get educated and started the Frontier Nursing Service. Now, she started this in Appalachian, Kentucky, where at that time they had the poorest of the poor and in the mountains it was really hard to get to the people to provide them with good health care. But she did it, and she did it really well, to the point that other people in the government started to take notice and say, hey, these nurse midwives really are helping out in this area, and if they're helping out in this area, why can't they help out in the rest of America? At this point, they started funding schools for nurse midwives here in America, and that was the beginning of nurse midwifery education, and um, really the beginning of, uh, or the re-beginning of nurse midwives here in the USA. So here is where things get a little bit more complicated. You see, there is more than one type of midwife. Certified nurse midwives are nurses who go through a graduate degree program to study midwifery. Certified midwives are people who have gone through an undergraduate program of some sort, usually medical but not always, and then they go through a graduate program for nursing as well. Now both certified midwives and certified nurse midwives take the same national board, which is given by the American College of Nurse Midwives. Confused yet? <laughs> Certified professional midwives are the other type of midwife that is recognized in the United States. Now, certified professional midwives don't necessarily have an undergraduate degree, although a lot of them do, and they receive their education through apprenticeship, as the midwives of old did.
licensure happens through the state and each individual state ha has their individual laws about the midwives that can practice in that state. But not all states recognize certified professional midwives or CPMs. Indiana, for instance, has no laws regulating CPMs and so they are not recognized in the state of Indiana. Now here I am talking mostly about certified nurse midwifery as that is the program that I am going through, and also probably the most well-known and recognized of the midwives in the United States. So what do certified nurse midwives actually do? What is their scope of practice? Well, certified nurse midwives provide well-woman care throughout the lifetime. This includes pelvic exams, breast exams, pap smears, the same thing that most people go to their OBGYN for. They also provide treatment for and guidance for sexually transmitted infections for both women and their partners, and they provide family planning through contraception, through education, and then also through prenatal, birth, labor, and postpartum care. Now the focus of midwives is women's health from adolescence through menopause. But what happens when things go wrong? What happens if there is a problem? Well, midwives are taught to recognize the signs and symptoms of health problems for women. And if that happens, they will refer you to a family physician or an OBGYN, someone who can help you. Now the good thing about having a midwife involved in, in this is that often they can help provide you with some extra education and um, pre prevent, present you with the options so that you feel in control and supported through this medical situation. What makes midwives actually unique? Well, to help answer this question, I'm pulling out my giant book of Varney's midwifery, and I'm going to read you some of the hallmarks of midwifery that's inside the front cover. Now, you'll be able to find the rest of the hallmarks of midwifery down here, as well as the philosophy of midwives um, as far as the American College of Nurse Midwives go. But for a brief explanation, the first hallmark of midwifery is the recognition of pregnancy, birth, and menopause as normal physiologic and developmental processes. Now, this just means that pregnancy and birth is not something that is a disease or an illness or something that needs to be cured. The same with menopause. Menopause, every single woman goes through menopause. How can that be a disease? The same with pregnancy and birth. Most women go through those things. It is not a disease. It is not a problem that needs to be fixed. It is a normal process for women. Um, how about advocacy of non-intervention in the absence of complications? Remember how I said that some interventions when they're used for people who don't need them cause more problems than they actually fix? That's what this means. We as midwives feel that if there is not a problem, you should not try to fix it. And if you don't need an intervention, then you shouldn't use that intervention. Um, incorporation of scientific evidence into clinical practice. We are not crazy yahoos for the most part. Um, we actually do use scientific research to inform our practice and we try to perform in the ways that um, science says is the safest way to do things. Um, promotion of family-centered care. We do not think that um, the doctor and the woman or the care provider and the woman are the only people that are involved here. We want your family to be involved as much as you want them to be. Um, and that can include fathers in, in the birthing room and helping coaching. It could include um, other children or really whoever you consider to be your family. Um, we talk about cultural competence. We really want to make you comfortable wherever you're coming from and make sure that we provide care that is safe and comfortable and effective for you. Um, so that's just a taste of the hallmarks of midwifery. And again, look down here for, for more of those and for the philosophy of midwifery as well.